want to thank Michael for that rendition. For the word of God says, neither is there salvation in any other name. You know, sometimes we forget that. The only way you're going to be saved is the name Jesus. For the word of God says, they shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we are gathered here because we, we remember your Sabbath day. We're here to worship you and to keep it holy. For we know that in six days you made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in the midst. And you memorialize the seventh day. It is a seal. It is a sign that when we remember the Sabbath day, that we're on Jesus' side. Father, as we go forward, we know that time is running out. And you have a final warning for planet Earth. And we pray that we are, will avail ourselves to this time and make our calling and our election sure. We pray this in your son Jesus' name and in witness of the Holy Spirit that all the saints say, Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, saints. Happy Sabbath. You know, I like the way Paul said, to all the saints that be at Community of Hope. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. God is here with us. For the word of God says, where there are two or three gathered together in his name, that he is here with us. Now, I could tell you a long story of how the devil tried to prevent me from getting here, but I'm not going to tell you a long story. Because when I got locked in, I said, Lord, you got to take care of this. And you don't know what I'm talking about, but Andre, I'm going to share a little bit with you, not much. I'm on my way to the community of hope to worship with the saints. And I get to my gate, won't work. Just like this wouldn't work today. I told, I told Andre, I said, something's going on. That ain't nothing working, ain't nothing working. But Jesus still reigns. That's right. You know why he reigns? Because he says he will not suffer me or you to be tempted above that which we are able. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I said, now, y'all might don't believe in the devil, but I believe in the devil. Absolutely. And the word of God says we got to pray that the devil don't deceive us and hinder us and discourage us. That's right. Because no matter what he does, listen to me carefully, he can't do nothing unless God says, yeah, you can try, Job, but you can't kill him. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, yeah. Satan came to God and says, Job is just serving you because of all the good things you do for him. Mm. He said, but I got news for you. Remove that fence around him and let me get to him. Mm -hmm. And I haven't cursed you to your face. And so God says, really? <laughs> he says, I'm going to remove that fence. And you can read it in, in your Bible. You have your Bibles today? How many people got their Bibles? You can read it in Job. And so God says, okay, go ahead. You can do whatever you want, but you can't kill him. And so the Bible says, Satan went from the presence of the Lord, and there were problems in his family, problem in this area. His finances got bad, everything. It would seem like the roof was falling. 
And then I'm going to shorten this up because y'all know the story. <laughs> then some church folks showed up. Sure oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> some church folks showed up and says, and, and, and the word says, they just sat there. They ain't said nothing for a long while. They didn't know how to approach Job to tell him, now come on, Job, you got to fess up. You're doing something wrong. All this calamity ain't coming on you for nothing. Mm. So they sat there for a long while. And they ain't say anything. And y'all know the story. Job was innocent. Mm -hmm. But God tested and proved him. Yeah. And Job was faithful. Now, the Bible says these things were written for our admonition right. so that we can learn from them that God is faithful. 1 yes. Corinthians 10, 13. And he will not. See, you got to speak like this because, uh, you know, people don't get the English language too good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you ain't got to break it down. You just got to slow it down. <laughs> He will not suffer you or me to be tempted above that which we are able. But with every, not some, not a few, but with every temptation, he will provide a way of escape Thank you, Lord. that you and I can bear it. I don't know what you're going through, but I know what the Bible said. They have no temptation taking you but such that is common to men. I got locked out today. You'll probably get locked out tomorrow, so forth and so forth. We all are in this road on this planet Earth, which I call Titanic. The band is playing. The ship is sinking. And there's no lifeboats. Only a few. I don't know if you read the story about the Titanic or not. The reason why I'm interested in one month after they launched the Titanic, my dad was born. 1912. And my dad lived to be 102. And the reason why he lived to be 102, I give you the secret of his longevity. He honored his mother and his father, and God fulfilled that his days were long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. God means what he says, and he says what he means. Now, we are here to worship God, but we are here to do more than that. There is a heaven to win and a hell to shun. And today, you are going to make your choice. You are going to make your choice. Whether you want to be saved or where you want to be lost. So you know where we're going. Amen. Amen. Right up front, you know where you're going. Let's look what the Word of God says. Let's go back to that text that we read, John 3.16. Look what it says. Uh, look what it says. John 3, 16. This is a powerful text. And sometimes we have to read, uh, like the Bible said, let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Amen? Amen. We know that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, but let's read a few verses around it. See what the word of God says. John, let's go right here where it says, um, I have to go a little further up because we, go, we want to see this is, this is so true today. John 3, look what it says here. Verse 1. You have your Bibles? You ready? Amen. Look what it says. There was a man of the Pharisees named what? Nicodemus. Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. 
The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, here's a leader who's supposed to be leading us, and he got a little perplexity here. Amen? Amen. But he see the workings of God. He said, nobody can do that except God be with him. Amen? Amen. You know what the word says? These signs shall follow them. Amen? What signs are following you? Oh, that's the problem. What signs are following you? All right. Here's what this says. Survival in the time of the end. Here's what it says. Unless we understand the importance of the moments that are what? Swiftly passing away into eternity and make ready. Make ready. Thank you, my brother. Yes. Make ready to stand in the great day of God. We shall be unfaithful stewards. If we say we are servants of God and we don't know tomorrow's news today, there's a good chance we could be in this class. We don't know the time of night. We don't know what's going on. We don't know where we're going. So God has told us in the book of Habakkuk 2, he says, write the vision. Make it plain upon tablets that whosoever readeth may run. Are we running? There were two men in the Bible. One was running, and he got to the king before the other one did. And the king said, what's the message? message? He said, I don't know. He said, I just heard some noise, and I took off running. And you know it in the Bible. The other guy came a little slower, but he had a message. And I'm telling you today that you and I will not be saved by ourselves. And I would suggest for the community of hope, we have a lot of work to do. And the work that we want to do, we want to change things around. The Bible says we are layers of sea and neither hot nor cold. I want to say, by God's grace, it's time to get hot. And when you get hot, if you got something good, you're real selfish if you keep it to yourself. Right. Hello? Right. You are real selfish if you keep it to yourself. And plus, if you don't share with nobody, I don't want to be the first to tell you, but you don't have anything. Because people who have something that's good, they're going to share it. Huh? Yeah. There's no way you could be solid if it was in my ability to right now walk up to any one of you and give you a thousand dollars. You couldn't go no place without telling somebody what happened. You're going to tell somebody. It is simple as that. Something good happen to you. You're going to tell somebody. So I'm suggesting to get you started. Don't leave your house unless you have something good to share with somebody as you go forth day by day, whatever you have to do. In Seventh-day Adventist circles, we call them tracks, books, literature. Or whatever, it's something good about Jesus. And don't feel bad. Guess what? Everybody in here is in the same boat. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, you know, don't, 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 don't feel like, you know, we, we're all in the same boat. But we must change. 
every week we want to invite somebody, whether they come or not, to hear about Jesus. Huh? Would you agree with me? So we have to change. We got to stop being lukewarm. As the Bible says, we are. We're the last church, the last seer. We ain't hot and we ain't cold. We're lukewarm. And Jesus don't like us like that, do he? Jesus don't like, he said, if you don't change, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Amen? Amen. So get it in our minds, we must change. There must be a revival and there's no better day than today. Amen? Amen? So let's look at that text. This Nicodemus, he was a ruler. He came to see Jesus. And the first thing he realized, he says, God must be with you. He didn't recognize he was God. But he knew that he had some encounter with God. Look what it says. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of what? Who's he talking to? Jesus. He's talking to Jesus. But it applies to us. We need to be born again. We need to be born again. I don't know what you did in 2020 and 19, whatever, but they ain't going to help us in 2022. We must be born again. Let's see what else it says here. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? That sounds like the blind leading the blind, right? He's a leader in, in God's church, and he don't know how to help the brother to be born again because he don't know. He's talking to the master of to be born again, which is Jesus. You follow me? Do you follow me? Nicodemus is talking to Jesus, and Jesus told him, you can't go to heaven unless you change. You must be born again. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, we both, we are both of these flesh, and hopefully we're here because we've been born of the Spirit. Amen. 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 It says, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. I don't know when the Holy Ghost got a hold of me, but I thank God that the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. And I am a radical follower of Jesus. I just act like this because y'all act like that. I want y'all to think I'm crazy. (laughs) Y'all know that. Y'all know that. I'm just just trying to be calm like y'all. But I am not calm like (laughs) y'all. I am not calm like y'all. I get excited about truth, about the Lord, and what he's doing in my life. Okay? I come from the hood. You, you, you laugh, but you, you, got to, you got to experience that. And, and they said, my soul look back and wonder. All my friends I grew up with, they either dead, they in jail, they locked up, or they don't know where they are. They, 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 they like not, they're not there. Most of them got killed in Vietnam. I went there and I didn't go to Vietnam, I was a Vietnam vet, and the Lord spared my life. He put no more on me than I could bear. Acts 17, 26 says, The Lord has made of one blood all nations of men to dwell upon the earth and have determined where they would be before time. God knew I would be here. God knew you would be here. 
You are right where God knew you would be. And he's, you're here to hear the message that he has prepared for you. Not me. I didn't prepare this message. This was, this was here way before I came along. Amen. Look what it said. Let's go on. We don't know how the Holy Ghost works. It's like the wind. When you feel it, you don't know which way it went. It went that way. You don't know. But you will know when God is leading you. Amen. Nicodemus answered and said to him, verse 9, how can these things be? Verse 10, Jesus answered and said to him, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? I tell you, brothers and sisters, regretfully, that the blind is leading the blind in the Christian community. The blind is leading the blind. And so I'm going to ask you the $64,000 question. What is the solution to that? It's in the Bible. The answer is in the Bible. What's the solution to that? Here's what it is. It says, steady to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. He's going to steady because his soul salvation depends upon it. He can't follow someone who don't know where they're going. Here we see a story of Nicodemus. He's a leader, a master in Israel. And right. 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 The word, I need a new Bible, right? right? Oh, man, my Bible is falling apart. That's all right. That's all right. Amen. Bible's falling apart. I mean, it falls right out. The Lord said he won't suffer me to be tempted, but I'm able so. He's telling me, Larry, you need a new Bible. There's time that you need stuff new. Amen? Amen. So it's time this Bible, I don't know if it'll be born again, but I got to get a new one. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Let's go on here. Amen. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak, that we, we speak that we do know, and testify we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. No, we don't want to say, well, I think, I feel, I believe. That's going nowhere. Yeah. We have to testify what we, what? No. 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 Amen. Let's go on. I have told you earthly things, verse 12, and you believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Woo! That's powerful. That's powerful. We can believe of heavenly things if we believe of earthly things, right? How many people in here seen their heart? <laughs> but do you believe you got a heart? Yes. All right. So you believe that by previous experience of other people, right? So by faith, you believe you have a heart. And if you're here and living, you, you most likely, we, we know you have a heart. Amen? All right, so here we go. Jesus has given us a formula here. And no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man is in heaven. And who is that? Jesus. Which is in heaven, that's correct. Yes. And, and Jesus. Now let me give you a little story about Jesus. The text we read every Sabbath is that, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit so you can understand it. God the Father so loved the world that God the Father sent his only begotten son, Jesus, into the world. He took on flesh. That if we believe in the work that Jesus is doing and will do, God says he's going to give those everlasting life. What do you think about that? You think that's important? You know, the Bible said there is one event to everybody. Yeah. Whether you go to church or don't go to church. And what is that? Death. 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 That's right. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. No, nope, I'm sorry. They don't go to heaven. They don't go to purgatory. They don't go to none of those places. They go exactly where Jesus says he will find them when he comes. He said, behold, the day cometh that all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth. 
But I got good news. And that good news is that when Jesus took our place, he died and he told his disciples, he says, I'm going to rise the third day. He died, he took our place, he paid our sin that you and I couldn't pay. You know, if I, if I had to die for my sins, guess what? I ain't coming up. That's right. But Jesus, who was the son of man, he was 100% man and 100% God. Amen? Amen? And when he took our place, he prophesied. Three days I'm going to come up. And very early on the first day of the week, he rose. And every evangelical Sunday keeping person know that because every Easter they say, oh, Jesus rose on the first day of the week. Well, praise God, they know that. So they should also know it can't be the Sabbath. Because very early on the first day of the week, they say, he rose. But the Bible said the seventh day of the Sabbath, so we cleaned that up real nicely. Amen? Amen. But still, we have the blind leading the blind. There are many people who believe that there's some special holiness to Sunday keeping. There is none. The Bible predicted that a man called the son of perdition would attempt to change God's law. See? Uh, I, I don't have my Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah, I do. I got them in the sanctuary, though. See? See those Ten Commandments? Those were the commandments that God gave Moses when they came out of Egypt on Mount Sinai. Now, the Bible says that if you break any one of those commandments, you have sin. Sin means, this is, this is, this is, this is simple gospel. Sin means you're unlike God. Okay? Because God won't violate any of those principles. But anyone can have those principles but no one can have the fourth principle, which is the Sabbath day. For the Bible said the true God made the heavens and the earth. So if you encounter any of those gods out there, ask them, which part of the earth did you create? Well, well. That settles it real quick. Plus the Bible said if any Christian, anyone come along and say they know him, and don't keep his commandments? The Bible says what? They're liars. There's a lot of liars in Christian dome. And God loves them. God loves them. And so we see that God is going to send a final warning to the world. Most people call it the mark of the beast. But the mark of the beast only brings up the truth of God. The Bible says, I'm going to let the devil do what he wants to do and try to force people to accept a false day. But God's going to pull out his ladder rain on his people. Right here is the Sunday law. Here is the whole controversy from the time that the church of Laodicea, we're the last part of God's church. Y'all ever heard of a remnant carpet? Yes. If I was to cut a piece of this carpet off, it's made by the same person who made the main part. Has the same design, there's no difference, but it's the remnant. And so, we are God's remnant people, according to Revelation 12, 17, that says what? Satan was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. They have two characteristics. 
They keep God's commandments and they have the testimony of Jesus, which is which according to Revelation 19:10 is the spirit of prophecy. Now a lot of people don't like prophets. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about. You don't never hear nobody say, well, who is Matthew? Who is Mark? Who is Luke? You don't never hear nobody say anything about them, right? Well, they got the prophetic gift the same way Alan G. White got it. Prophecy came not in old times, but the, by the will of men. The holy men or women, prophetess, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God is no respecter of persons. He could use whoever he wants. One time he even used a donkey. A donkey can talk. Truth is truth, brothers and sisters, no matter who tell you it. That's what we have to learn. Too many people run around and say, Reverend so-and-so said this, or Reverend so-and-so said, no, that ain't true. There ain't no reverence. According to the Bible, holy and reverend is God's name. Amen. That's what the Bible says, amen? That's what the Bible also says. Jesus answered and said unto them, oh, we, we read that one. Uh, 14, here we go. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Brothers and sisters, God, Jesus, is in charge in this world. That whosoever, this part I like, is no limitation. You can be lost if you want to, or you can be saved if you want to. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, unfortunately, I, I hate to tell you this, but thousands of Christians and thousands of people are going to be lost. You know why? The Bible's going to tell you why. Let's read on. Look what it says. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should, what's that word? Should not. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to what? Condemn. To condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Now here it is. We come right down to the basic of salvation. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the what? The name. the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light, you can call light truth, or the word of God, you can call it whatever you want. Here's the condemnation of most human beings. This is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now listen, you can hear the word of God. And if you reject the word of God, it's also going to tell you your deeds are evil. Amen. If you reject the word of God, your deeds are evil. Look what else it says. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But, but... Y'all know that, what that word means, right? When you hear that word, but, that means we're going to change this around. But, he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifested, that they are wrought in God. That lays the foundation. You can accept the light, or you can reject the light. And one thing about the mark of the beast, the devil will take your worship any way you want to give it to him. He will, he's even going to force you to worship him. But God, he is loving. He tells you the truth. He gives you the light. He let you follow your conscience 
the pioneers of the U.S. states of the United States of America said freedom of conscience. God gave you a brain to use. And no matter how many people laugh at you or scorn at you, you do what you want to do. Okay? We all do what we want to do except when we become Christians. When we become Christians, we let the Lord Jesus tell us what to do because we're the blind. We can't see things the way we should. So God loves everybody. But there even come a time that this love stuff must stop. The Bible says God will do his strange act. He's going to do what my mom told me and my dad told me. Son, we love you, but you're going to get a whooping today. <laughs> you, you're going to get a whooping tonight. And my mother would say, and when your daddy come home, you're going to get another whooping. The Bible says if you spare the rod, right. you ruin the child. Yes. And that's the problem in the world today. Right. The world don't have no whippings going on. Right. I'm serious, this world's out of hand. Children are killing their parents. Mm -hmm. We can clean it up real easy. All you need is some drive-by whippings. <laughs> That's all you need. Some drive-by whippings. But the people of the world, they, they so blind, they got away from God's law, so they don't know what's going on. But nevertheless, God says, okay, church members, and the world, and those who don't go to church, time is running out. We will bring this to an end. And so it's called the final warning. The final warning for Seventh-day individuals. Okay, here's what it says, principles of health. Now, the reason why you got to have health, you ever heard that saying, you are what you eat? I remember when I was growing up, we wanted to make bad dogs. Anybody know what we fed them? Gunpowder. Gunpowder will make a bad dog. And you know what? I think some Christians been eating some gunpowder. I'm serious. I am serious. They are evil and mean-spirited, sometimes worse than people who don't go to church. Now, y'all don't, you know, this is the truth. This is the truth. But you and I know that when they do that, they're not Christians. If any man say they know him and don't do what God says, they are liars. We got a lot of liars in the world. So, health is very important. According to Psalms 103, 1 to 3, health is a part of of the gospel and should not be separated from the gospel. Health is like your arms to your body. A body without arms is helpless. Amen? Amen. Jesus says, I want you to prosper and be in health. But Christians get sick just like the world gets sick. Why? They don't follow the prescription of God. What's the, what's the prescription of God? Anyone tell me. Y'all should know it by now. We've been over this many times. Jesus wrote a prescription for Christians. What is it? Have you been feeling it? Exodus 15, 26. Someone turn to it and read it real loud. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus 15, 26. Real quickly, real quickly. We have no time to lose. Exodus 15, 26. It's a, said, uh, here we go. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Okay, that's the prescription. 
There's a problem in Christian doing with that prescription, right? Christians aren't fulfilling, they're not getting that prescription filled. For sure. God says, if thou will hearken diligently. We don't know what that word means. The best way to describe that is, is, is a lady in the supermarket with her little child, and, and the child's all over the place, all over the place. You can't control him. And she said, Johnny, I tell you to stop. And the kid's still going, Johnny, I tell you to stop. And after about fifth time, she don't say nothing no more. Is that diligently? No. no. As many times as necessary, you are to hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. That's why Jesus says, verily, verily, verily. But we Christians, we, we have dropped the ball someplace. But we have to reclaim that. If we're going to be saved in God's kingdom, amen? amen. So God said, if you do what I say, long story short, keep my statutes, keep my commandments, do that which is right in his sight. You can't do something wrong and get right results. But Christians think they can do it. They're going to do things in the old way. And God's still going to bless them, right? No, he's not. That's why we have what we call today Babylon confusion. Amen? So look, we need help. It says, principles of health. God is just as willing to restore the sick to health now, and his disciples in this time are to pray for the sick. When people get sick, do you pray? Or you try all your fancy tricks first? And when they don't work, then you, you tell them, oh, could you, could you pray for me? Could you pray for me? We have a problem in the prayer arena. You know why? We don't do what God says. Do that which is right. What is right, we're going to look at it. Amen? Amen. But Christians want God to answer the prayer regardless of what they do. There's no standard with God. You can just give anything to God. Uh Uh-uh. Watch. God is willing to answer our prayer. But only as we live in what? Obedience to his word can we claim the fulfillment of his promise. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Psalm 66, 18. People say, oh, pray for me. Pray, pray, pray. They don't say nothing about iniquity. You can't just give God anything without first examining your life. There's a standard. You want a job? He said, okay, you can go to work here, but you've got to wear a blue hat. Are you going to wear a blue hat? <laughs> you know, if you want the job, you're going to wear a blue hat. If you want God to answer your prayer, you've got to meet the standard. Amen? Here we go. Oh, sorry about that. Go back. They must live in harmony with the laws of God, both natural and spiritual. Ministry of Healing 227, you know that. If you have sinned by withholding from God his own, heed the injunction that he has given you, and what do I say? Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, some people bring some of the tithes. Y'all didn't hear what I said. People say, oh, I send this tithe over there, and I send this tithe over here and over there. What did Jesus say? He says, bring ye A-L-L. Now, many people in some of the church is confused. They're sending their tithe all over the place. That's not what Jesus told them to do. You got offering, you can send that wherever you want to send it. But if you are returning to God, his own, he says very clearly, bring ye A-L-L. Okay, let's go to the next one. Where's the storehouse? Right here. If you read the text in Malachi, he said that there might be meat in my house. Is this God's house? Yes, it is. God wants to get this gospel done, but many Christians, many Seventh-day Adventist Christians are not bringing all the tithe. 
They are bringing an offering that's like Cain. Don't talk any particular about this. My fruit is just as good as, you know, bringing the lamb. Where do we get that Cainish religion from? We have it, though. Whatever God says, we think we can edit it. It won't happen. Amen? Amen. It won't happen. All right, here we go. Those who will gratify their appetite and then suffer and take what? Oh, we got drug addicts in the church? Take drugs, look what it said, to relieve them. They never read this. You won't hear it from the leaders. Maybe what? Assured that God will not interpose to save health and life, which is so recklessly perilled. Many, as a last resort, request the prayer of the elders of the church for their restoration to health. I like this. I do a holy dance up here, if y'all don't mind. God, who? God. God does not see what? Fit, Fit to what? Answer prayers offered in behalf of such, for he knows that if they should be restored to health, they would again sacrifice it. Now, God's people don't take drugs anyway. Amen. Ain't that true? Amen. Because if we do, we are doing what the Bible says, by her sorceries were all men deceived. Now listen how you're deceived. People today actually believe that they can take poison and get health. Mm. Wow, wow. That's, that's, that's crazy. You can actually take poison and get health. But they believe it. Why do they believe that? Because they have been deceived by Satan. So God has raised up his people to tell the truth and to bring forth light. We read God's prescription. You can't, you know, I wish I had some arsenic up here. I said, anybody sick? You didn't hear what I said. Anybody sick? I got something that will cure you. Take a little of this arsenic. Oh, you woke up. But the well is drunk with the wine of confusion, Babylon. That's why in Revelation 18, Elder, God calls his people out of confusion. We got to go on. This is getting good. Now, here's a, here's a, here's a real heavy one. Y'all know this story in the Bible. Some I saw had air in praying for the sick. Woo! To be healed before, who's that, what's that word? Unbelievers. Unbelievers. We should follow the example of Jesus. He put unbelievers out of the room, then healed the sick. Y'all know that story? How are you going to ask God's blessing when you got a bunch of people in the room, mother, father, sister, brother, whoever, and they don't believe in Jesus? Around these unbelievers is darkness and demons. We know that. No wonder Christians are so weak. They don't do what God said. Oh, there, my sister will be offended. My brother will be offended. So forth and so forth. So who are you going to obey? God or your sister, your brother, your mother, your wife? You want God to answer prayer, but you won't do what he says. That's why the world thinks Christians are crazy. They're always praying, and they never get no answers the way they want them. Because you don't meet God's standard. Thank God is an individual thing. Thank God is an individual thing. Nevertheless, Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world. Everybody's going to hear the truth. And nobody's going to be at the judgment bar of God and say, Lord, nobody told me. When everybody hears the gospel, then the end shall come. 
And the end is to close the Pope base. We don't need no more intercessor because everybody have made their volunteer choice. Amen? Let's go on. The final warning for the Seventh-day Adventist angel, individual and for the world. Guess what? What's the difference between these two? For, for God's only true Seventh-day Adventist church and for the world, what's the warning? What's the warning? It is the same. There's no difference. The difference slightly is that you and I has been given the truth not to keep it, but to share it. The world don't know what's coming. Amen? Before the world was destroyed by a flood, Noah warned the people for 120 years. Y'all been warning people for 120 years? No, 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 that's for sure. Okay? But it says, before the destruction of Sodom, Lot gave the warning message to the wicked. And before Christ's first coming, John the Baptist heralded the coming of the Messiah. Then why should not so important an event as Christ's second coming be given proper notice? And a warning must be sent to prepare the world for the final destruction. Okay, it's the same over here as over there. Amen? Amen. Do you tell people Jesus is coming? Do you tell people, behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, people say, I'm proud of this. I'm proud. What are you proud of? You ain't doing anything. Amen? The Bible said without Christ, you and I can do what? Nothing. Nothing. Whatever you do, it's because God has given you the gift or the talent to do it. The credit don't belong to you. It belongs to God. Amen? We have to give people warning. It is true that the world in general has never received favorably any of God's warning message in former ages. And Christ declares that his final, you know what that means? No more coming. Final warning will, typo, not be heeded by any more than his warnings sent through Noah and Lot, yet the message must be given, though there are but few who receive it. There's only going to be few. But you and I, we have the opportunity to choose. I don't, I'm not really too much concerned with what everybody else is do, doing. I want to know what must I do. Okay? Let's look at it. Here is Christ's message for our day. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that what? Keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Here we see that the message to be given just before Christ's second coming is found in the book of Revelation. This is specially given in chapter 14, verses 6 to 14. What is that? What do we call that? present truth. Here it is. Fear God. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting God. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his evaluation or judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven. Do you know that as I speak, Jesus is in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary and the books are open. He is now judging the dead. A lot of people think they got away. A lot of world think, oh, when I die, I'm gone. You might be gone. And you might do what the world say, R.I.P. <laughs> what do you say? They, they, they say, oh, rest in peace. Oh, he's going to rest. He ain't got no choice. It's his awakening that you need to focus on. When you're dead, you're going to rest in peace. Yep. Ain't nothing else you can do. You're dead. Okay. Amen? So God says, wake up. Fear God and get go Fear don't mean to be afraid of, but give God due reverence. Do all. For the hour of his evaluation, your resume is in heaven. 
minds in heaven. The recorded angel has recorded everything we've done in our life. I had a lot of repenting to do. Still got a lot more to do. You do too. Amen? But when we have pardon written next to our name, Jesus is going to do what he says he's going to do in Daniel 8, 14. What is that? Cleanse the sanctuary of our records of sin. Until 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary process start. God is starting to remove sin out of his sanctuary. And eventually, it will come up to the time that right now as I speak, y'all ever heard of digital currency? Hello? Well, right now, there's a bill before Congress to get rid of our cash. I mean, we're, we're, we're right on the cutting edge of prophecy being fulfilled. We are right on the edge of Revelation 13. And he calls us all to receive a mark that no man may buy or sell, say he that worships the beast or his image or receive his mark or the number of his name. That's what, this is the final warning that God is sending to the world. You know what it means? You know what the beast is? You know what the mark is? You know what his name is? You, you get all that, right? You serious? You don't have it? Well, it says in the next message, if any man worship the beast or his image or receive his mark or his name the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture no mercy you can see that in ezekiel 9 when god tells his angel go forth every you know when i was coming here i saw all these cars thousands of cars and Kids running up and down the road, and they don't know what you're hearing today. Or they wouldn't have been out there breaking God's Sabbath day. They don't know. And the devil wanted to keep it just like that. He don't want them to know. Because if they fulfill that third angel's message, the angel of Ezekiel 9 says, Slay what? Utterly young. Y'all don't believe me. I can look, see your faces. You don't believe me. Let's read. I'm going to read. Let's go to Ezekiel 9. This ain't no joke. Ooh, this ain't my Bible. I picked up Andre's Bible. I'll try to get a new Bible. Ezekiel 9. See, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to simplify a lot of this talk that we do. You heard of the tornadoes going down south? and through different states and whatnot, those are the judgments of God, okay? We get judgment when people don't want no part of God and so forth and so forth, and God says, look, leave them alone. Ephraim is joined unto the idols. Angels pour back. Remember, they couldn't get to Job unless God said, get them. So God said, okay, they don't want no religion? Okay, angels pull back. Let them see what will happen without me being on God. So when the devil can get to you, it's called judgment because he can't kill everybody. But when the wrath of God comes, here's what we read happens in Ezekiel 9. Here's what it says. Ezekiel 9, verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, that's the world, and through the midst of Jerusalem, that's the Christian community, and set a mark. Upon the forehead of men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of the earth. The mark is the same as the seal in Revelation 7. This prophet is calling it a mark, but in Revelation 7, John calls it a seal. It's the same thing. The events are the same. Look what it says. And to the other, those are the six with the destroying weapons, he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the world and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Here it is. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my church. Yep. Christians think this is a joke, but this is not a joke. 
God is sending and has sent the final warning. Okay, you Christians, get it together because God is going to address the sin question. And I don't know about you, I want to know that. And not only do I want to know it, I want to know when the Bible says he's going to do this, this, that, and this. Okay? Now, until, I'm going to, let me just break this down real quickly. Here's God's last church. Three angels' message, which we just read. Fear God and give glory to him, bow down this fallen. All those churches that say they are Christians, they don't follow the Bible. If they don't keep God's Ten Commandments, you knock out 98% of all religious groups. 98%. God said if they say they know him and don't keep his commandments, the Bible says they are liars. You ever heard of false prophet? Do y'all believe in the false prophet? So what's the problem you can't believe in the true prophet? If God has given his Seventh-day Adventist church a prophet and you don't believe in it, you know what that means? I'm going to tell you what it means. Here it is, right here. See, the, see these Ten Commandments? Who gave the Ten Commandments? God. So here it is, real simple. If you reject God's Ten Commandments, you reject God, the author of the Ten Commandments. So if you reject the spirit of prophecy, you reject God. Who gave the spirit of prophecy? God says the Seventh-day Adventist church need the spirit of prophecy so that they can know tomorrow's news today, but there are some canes in the Seventh-day Adventist church that say, I don't need the spirit of prophecy. I just need the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all Babylon got. They just got the Bible. And they're just as confused as confused can be. You know why? Because they don't have the keys of the kingdom. They don't have the secret of the kingdom. In Matthew 13, Jesus said, to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. If we didn't have the spirit of prophecy, we couldn't write the vision, make it plain, so you would know what to do. Real clear. Let me put, give it to you. God raised up his church. He gave them three angels. of fear God, Babylon's fallen. If any man worships the beast, that the duck, they're going into all the world. But in the Seventh-day Adventist church, you have wheat and tear. Some people will accept what God said, and some people won't. Well, those people who won't, they become the wicked living. They don't talk about that in, in real churches, right? No. Yeah. This is a real church, and we're going to talk about it. Amen. We're going to warn as many people that time is short, and God says, get ready. I used to play this, this little game when I was growing up. Ready or not, here I come. Here I come. What was it, one, two, three, four, something like that we used to play. And we had to go run and hide. Oh, y'all never played that. Oh, yeah, we did. Okay, here it is. Three angels' message. Now, probation closed. Here's, 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 the, here's the, the sad part. People are saying when Jesus comes, that's the end of the world. That's not. The end of the world here is when you are judged. If you're righteous, you're judged righteous. If you're holy, you're judged holy. If you're wicked, you're judged wicked. And this will end when Jesus, your only intercessor, takes up your name and pleads your cause before the Father. He says, Father, I died for Larry, and his books, all his sins have pardoned. He's confessed all his sins. So Father said, great, you can take his books out of our sanctuary. They're going to be cleansed. Okay, I'm going to show you the importance of it in our opening scripture. The Bible said, and whosoever was not found written in the books, go to hell's fire. A lot of Christians don't know that. They think hell's fire is some joke or some, something to laugh about. It's not. My sister, I made a little fire at home. I was making some charcoal. Ooh, good, that fire was pretty hot. And all I got was my hand. We forget about that. This ain't no laughing matter. Hell's fire is to destroy sin and sinners. It's a strange act. God does not like to destroy anyone. But there come a time that if you don't meet the standard of the job, you will have, it will happen to you 
like it happened to Lucifer. Lucifer didn't like the requirements in heaven. And the Bible said that old serpent was what? Cast out. I put my son out. You may have to put your son out if they don't obey you. They're going to stay in your house and roof over their head and food and stuff and, and don't obey the parents? Hello. Who have bewitched these parents out here? Mm-hmm. Put them out! Amen. That's what Jesus did. He had to put out the third ranking angel in heaven called Lucifer, and now we got to deal with him down on earth called the devil. Amen? But that's okay. The day's coming. The devil's going to get his share. Amen? So here we go. The people who gave this message to the world must therefore know what is meant by the beast, his image, his mark, and we find this clearly where? In Revelation 13. But before we go there, we need to just look at our opening scripture text, Revelation 20. You know, when Jesus came out of the tomb, I like what he says. I am the resurrection and the life, and I have the keys. How many keys did Jesus have? Huh? Two. That's right. Here's a steal up here. Jesus had two. I have the keys of death and of hell. Hell refers to Hades or the grave. Death, why do you need keys to get people out of death? Satan controlled both prison houses. If you're, my mom and my brother and my sister, they're all being held by Satan. They're captives of death. For the wages of sin is death. That's where the devil wants to keep all of us. But when Jesus came out the tomb, he snatched those, no, he shouldn't say it like that. He got those keys from the devil. He says, ah, have the keys of hell and of death. Now, here's a, here's a simple question. Hallelujah, right. Why you need keys? You got, you got to let something out. You got to open. You need keys. Now, I don't know if y'all ever heard of skeleton keys. You heard of skeleton keys? All your skeleton key will fit a skeleton door. <laughs> you hear? Them brother keys not going to get you out of there, my brother. You need a skeleton key. Only Jesus can get you out of the grave, out of Hades, and out of death. Now, as a vet, anybody ever heard of Normandy Beach? When you look at those war pictures, and you see all those soldiers bobbing and floating in the water, guess what? They're not in the grave. I don't know how many fish ate them up or where they went, but I do know one thing. Death has them. And wherever they are, you need the keys to get them out. And that's what Jesus is going to do. I want you to read it. We want to see it real quickly. Let's look at it. Revelation 20. The great white throne judgment happens at the third coming of Christ. Anybody ever heard of the third coming of Christ? Yes. You heard of the second. Well, when Jesus comes the third time, he brings the New Jerusalem back. That's right. He brings the Garden of Eden back, and he put it where he wanted it at the beginning before Adam and Eve sinned. He said, Behold, I make all things new. If I was to come to your house, I would see a cheer in your house. And if I were to ask you, why is that chair there? What's the answer? Huh? So I can sit down. No, that's not the answer. It's your chair, but why is it up against the wall? I'm just, I'm making this up. Go ahead. Why is it up against the wall? Here's the answer. Everything in your house is where you want it. That's why it's there. And so when God planted a garden eastward in Eden as king of the universe, That's where he wanted it. And when he comes back the third time, he's going to put it back. 
Oh, Y'all don't get excited about this. That's what I'm saying. You're a little lukewarm in here. He's going to put his furniture in the Garden of Eden back where he wanted it. Amen. Amen. I don't think they get this. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man. Well, he's going to put the man back, and he's going to put the tree of life back. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God knows the future, and he has a set time there for every purpose, for every work. He has also pledged himself to do nothing that virtually concerns this world, but he reveals to speak unto his servants of prophets beforehand. And then he holds his servants responsible for warning the world. They are watchmen on the wall of Zion who should be able to read the signs on God's prophetic clock over there. You should know all this because it all comes from the Bible. Here's what God says is going to happen and how it's going to happen and when it's going to happen. Who's going to be involved and who's going to be the participants? Though the vision tarry, wait for it, for it will surely come. It will not tarry. Ready or not, these things are going to be fulfilled and you need to be warning people <coughs> of tomorrow's news today. Amen. Amen? So here we see it. There are watchers on the wall of Zion who should be able to read the signs on God's prophetic clock so that they can tell the time and give the warning at the hour of crisis. Amen? And when God's hours strike, he has his agencies in readiness to carry his message to the world. Facts of, uh, facts of Faith, page 216.1. That's powerful. Amen. Why do you think the people are depressed? Why do you think we have a mental illness out there? People don't know what's going to happen. You, you're just so blessed to know God. So if you didn't go and know God, you'll be like the, the rest of these people out here committing suicide and whatever. They don't know what to do. There are many precious truths contained in the Word of God. But it is present truth that the flock needs now. I have seen the danger of the messenger running off from the important points of present truth to dwell upon subjects that are not calculated to unite the flock and sanctify the soul. You and I, as we study the word of God, we should speak the same thing, have the same mind, and the same judgment. Why? Because Jesus tells the same story no matter what you have. You read your Bible, the same thing I read. That's why when you turn over to the Bible, you read the same thing I'm reading. So how do you come up with a new theology? Because you don't believe what the Bible says. You, you make it say what you want it to say. That's a problem. And we'll get you in trouble for sure. All right, here we go. Satan will take every advantage to injure the cause. I saw the necessity. I like these English words. Y'all like these English words? I saw the necessity. That's a fabulous word. Of the messengers, especially watching and checking all fanaticism. What's fanaticism? When you add to or you take from. You are to go exactly like the Bible says, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you go into some other stuff, you're in fanaticism. Amen? Satan is pressing in on every side, and unless we watch for him and have our eyes open to his devices, the brothers gave a testimony today about that, and snares and have on the whole arm of God, the fiery darts of the wicked will what? Yeah. Hit us. Revelation 12, 7, the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commands of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Long has the Lord waited for the spirit of what? 
service to take possession of the what? Whole church. So that everyone shall be working for him according to his ability. When the members of the church of God do their appointed work in the needy fields at home and abroad and fulfillment of the gospel commission, the whole world will soon be warned and the Lord Jesus will return to the earth with power and great glory. This gospel of the king shall be preached to all the world for a witness. Didn't say everybody was going to accept, but they will hear. And to all nations, then the end shall come. Hundreds, yea, thousands who have heard the message of salvation are still idlers in the marketplace. What that mean? I tell you what it means. Christians are preaching to themselves. You know what that means? We just come to church, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. But all those people out there are unwarned and going to perdition. Does that bother you? You sleep at night? If you knew your mother was going to be lost, would you go to sleep? If you really knew that, would you go to sleep? But you go to sleep on your neighbor. And you sleep well. You don't have the burden of people, of souls, on your heart. We let all these times pass. We don't have nothing to give people. All kinds of people out there don't know. If they knew what you knew, they would be in here with you. They don't know what you know. They don't know anything about that. That's why the gospel's got to go. And so Jesus said to all of us, Why stand ye here all day idle? Look over your record. You're going to meet it in the judgment. How many people did you warn this week? You didn't even warn the people in your own house. I, I got a lot of people. I don't, I don't know religion or whatever. You still got to warn them. They, they're not going to get to the gates of heaven and say, oh, Lord, nobody told me. You got to warn them. God said, why stand ye all day idle? Go ye also to the vineyard. Why is it that many more do not respond to the call? Is it because they think themselves excused that they do not stand in the pulpit? Let them understand that there is a large work to be done outside the pulpit by thousands of what? Consecrated, Consecrated lay members. No, the work is for everybody. It is a fatal mistake to suppose that the work of soul saving depends alone upon the pastor. Hello? I thought I would put that word pastor in there. Because anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? It says the ministry. The humble, consecrated believer upon whom the master of the vineyard places a burden of soul is to be given encouragement by the men upon whom the Lord has laid larger responsibility. Those who stand as leaders of the church are to realize that the Savior's commission is given to all. That word is, is real famous. To all who believe in his name. Bring ye all the tithes to his storehouse. That's the same all. Amen? Amen. 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 God will send forth into his vineyard many who have not been dedicated to the ministry by the laying on the hands. You know what that means? They're not an elbow. They're not. God's still going to use them. God wants to use you. We have a job to do. Amen? Now, here's, here's, here's the bottom line. There's a decided unwillingness with some to endure the cross. You know what the cross means? It's not easy. Oh, you got to carry your cross. Oh, I don't feel like going over to Sister Son's house. I know she's sick, but I don't feel like going over there. Why? It's a cross. And plus, it takes self-denial. We Christians should know what self-denial is, right? Jesus said, if anyone would be my disciple, he must first, what? Deny himself. Then, yeah, take up his cross and do what Jesus said. I got a health secret. If you help somebody else, you'll be more helpful. Did you know that? 
by helping other people, it gives you help. Try it. Go out your way and help somebody. Don't be always selfish, worried about me, 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 me. Amen? I saw that God has honest children among the nominal Adventists and the fallen churches. And before the plagues, the plagues go right between when, when, when the end of the world comes and Jesus comes, the seven last plagues are going to fall. Read them in Revelation 16. Before the plague shall be poured out, ministers and people will be called out from these churches and will gladly receive the what? Truth. Truth. Satan knows this, and before the loud cry, the loud cry takes right place when the Sunday law comes out. Amen? And the third angel is given, he raises excitement in these religious spies that those who reject the truth may think that God is with them. He hopes to deceive the audience and lead them to think that God is still working for the churches, but the light will shine, and all who are honest will leave the fallen churches and take their stand with the remnant. God is going to call his other sheep out, and they're going to keep his commandments and his Sabbath day. Amen? The church may appear is about to fall, it doesn't fall. When the, when, when the government comes in here and say you can't buy or sell unless you go to church on Sunday and reject the seventh day, what you going to do? What you going to do? The prophet says you and I, because we stand for truth, will not be able to buy or sell at any price. That's coming. Are you ready? <laughs> ready or not, it's coming. It's coming. And if you keep up with what's going on in Congress right now, they are about to solve this financial problem. Y'all heard about it? I'm sure you have. I'm sure you've been on the internet. I'm sure you heard it. It's all over the place. They're about to bring in their digital currency. You know what that is? No, Bitcoin, they're not going to worry with that. That's, that's collapsing. They want a digital currency like a credit card, like what they have in China. That everything you do, you can't do anything unless the government says, yeah, he's OK. He can buy this. He can buy that. You will not be able to buy or sell at any price because it's not the government. It is the devil trying to get you to get the mark of Rome, which is the mark of the beast. You're going to be tested. And you need to have information and understanding what God says so you can have courage. I don't care what people say. I'm going to follow my conscience. God gave me freedom of conscience, and I'm going to follow it. You got a brain. You don't have to do what I say. You have your own conscience. Amen? Amen. They say, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. Who says you got to do it? Last I checked, this was America, even though America is starting to change to that dragon that we read about in Revelation 13. And I want to warn you, if you can't stand when we're walking, you won't be able to stand when we start trotting. Right. Christians are falling like flies all over the place. They just go along with whatever anybody says. They don't follow the word of God. You're going to have a lot of problems. As the world twists you backwards and forwards, if you don't have your own mind, you're going to be in trouble. So here's what it says. The church may appear is about to fall, but it does not fall. It remains while the sinners in Zion will be sifted out. You're going to be shaken out. If you don't know what God said you should and should not do, it's a sad commentary. Don't waste time. This is a terrible ordeal, but nevertheless, it must take place. Select the message uh, 380, book 2. As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, but, there's that word, but have not been what? Sanctified through what? Obedience to the truth 
abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. You and I will do it. You and I, if we have not been sanctified, you know what sanctified means? When God blessed the Sabbath day, he did what? He, signed, he set it apart. You and I will be sanctified when we do what God says. If you don't do what God says, you're not sanctified. And if you're not sanctified, you're not going to pass the test of the National Sunday Law on the Mark of the Beast. You're not going to pass it. When I was in school, and they told me, oh, on that test is this. You better study it, or you're not going to pass. What do you think I did? <laughs> you got it. I studied it. So if I'm telling you right today that you got to know what the beast is and what his image is and what his mark and what his name is and who's behind it, you're not going to pass. What should you do? You better study it out or you're not going to pass the mark of the beast. And if you don't pass the mark of the beast, you're going to be in big trouble. But here's why it's so serious. I got a lot of relatives. They don't know what the beast is. They don't want to hear it. They're like, King, I don't, don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear that. Right. Brother, I'm telling you, the bridge is out. Don't go down that road. <laughs> I ain't thinking about you. <laughs> What's the problem? Here's the problem. Here's why many Seventh day Adventists, many Christians, Merely, many people who, who don't go to church will be lost. They don't want to receive correction. The Bible said they will not receive correction. That's the deceitfulness of sin. Sin will get you so messed up that you will fulfill 2 Thessalonians because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved this is the sad part. It says, God, not the devil, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So don't be in that class. There's only one way out of here, and that is Jesus. Is there anyone here who haven't given their life to Jesus? Good, excellent. We all have accepted the only name whereby we may be saved. But brothers and sisters, as we close, wherever you go, steady to show yourself approved and warn these people all around you in your home. Here's the good part. Don't worry about they reject you. There's a whole lot of people who say, I want to hear it. Tell them anyway. That's what the word says. Preach it in season, out of season, whether they hear or whether they don't hear. You've done your job. Amen? All right. The difference between the two is basically one's the beast and the other one's the image. The mark and a mark is different. When you read Revelation 13, he says he causes all to receive a mark. And what's the difference between a mark and the mark? <coughs> the only way you're going to get the answer is you've got to go to the secret of the prophets. The prophet says when the mark of the beast comes, it's coming with health. Okay? Health requirements is the mark. And Sunday keeping force is a mark. It's a difference. All right. I see your face. Go to Revelation 13. The mark. The mark. Yeah. The mark. The mark of the beast is for Sunday keeping with a clause to reject the Sabbath. A mark is the compliance mark. You need to meet this standard. So God has told us since health is a part of the gospel, the devil's going to approach the world on health because they don't think that's, they say, how they say it? But that's not, a, uh, that's not a salvation issue. That's what they say. It is a salvation issue because the Bible says if any man defile this temple, him God will destroy. 
Anyway, let's go to Revelation 13 as we close. I want to show this to you so you know the difference between the two. And you can go home and study that. Revelation 13 real quickly. Okay. All right. The first beast is the papacy. And the Bible says, Revelation uh, 13, 8, and what's that next word? All. All. There's that word again. Every single person, no matter what your classification is, no matter which church you go to, no matter where you come from, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. You are going to worship the Antichrist, the man of sin, unless your names are written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. How are you going to get your name in the book of life? Good. You make the first step. You accept Jesus as your sacrifice, as your Savior. Your name is written in there. How do you keep it in there? Obedience. Make sure you have no sins in there that you have not asked forgiveness for. Because if you have a sin in there, your book's not coming out the sanctuary. But if your name is in the book of life, you're good. And you will get your name in the book of life by accepting Jesus. And when you repent over your sins, God is going to remove all your records of sin that you have committed in your lifetime. And he's going to take them out of, your, out of his sanctuary. And that's called the cleansing of the sanctuary. Let's read it. Revelation 13, here's what it says. Um, well, I gotta back up. Because right over here, when the Sunday law come out, if you don't get the latter rain, you will not be able to withstand against the marvelous workings of Satan. How many people heard of the marvelous workings of Satan? That's Second Thessalonians. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. The devil is going to crack your skull. What that means, he's going to do things that you can't but say. Wow, that's God. That's a miracle. Nobody could do that. Satan's going to do it. He's going to bring fire down from heaven, according to the Bible, and deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. And the whole world will be deceived and say, Oh, Christ has arrived. Christ has arrived. How will you know he's not Christ? How will you know? He's going to say, I've changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. So if people believe that now, when he do his miracles and heal the sick, so forth and so forth, do you think the people are going to be deceived? They will be unless you and I warn them. Okay? Let's go on. Let's, let's close out on this. It says, uh, 13, it says, I'm going I'm to do, do the A and the mark. Verse 15, the lamb-like beast. Let me do 14, because that, that's the follow-up on Satan. And to see with them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the papacy, which is the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Who's the image of the beast? The USA is the lamb-like beast. Who's the image of the beast? Is when is when apostate Protestant churches take control of the United States government. You have church and state together, then you have what the papacy is, church and state. You have an image of the beast. You look in the mirror, what you see in the mirror is an image of you. It does everything that you do. And that's what the Bible said that the image of the beast is going to do. Verse 16, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and round, to receive a mark. It's different from the mark. A mark is the health portion of the deception where Satan's going to get people on. And all the pandemic and all the issues that we're having, they're going to keep coming, the prophet says. And the world's not going to follow the prescription that God gave. They're going to follow the prescription of the government. 
and unfortunately they will be deceived. And so we have to warn them. So let's, let's close up right here. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead that no man may buy or sell save who had the, the mark. See, there we go. You're going to have to keep Sunday to be able to buy or sell and you're not going to get no support from nobody. God's been telling us for years and we see it's right here. If they come out with that digital current, your cash in your pocket will be useless. It will be useless. The gas could be as high as the one. You can't buy it anyway because you ain't got the mark. Hello? So it's coming. It's right here. Pray God that he will continue to hold the winds back, according to Revelation 7. Because if it comes out, your liberty as a United States citizen is gone. You will now have to do what the beast and what his image say. We're right there, brother. We're, we're right on, on the corner of it. That no man may buy himself, save he that had the mark, or, don't forget that, the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So you can get the mark of the beast by being affiliated with the papacy and all those other powers. All right, we're going to close out. Any questions or anything as I close? Are we going to have an afternoon session? No, we're not going to have an afternoon session. <laughs> that was easy, right? <laughs> Do you want an afternoon session? Yeah, Do you want an afternoon session? You get a lot of questions? Yes. We'll have an afternoon session then. Amen. All right, so then I won't, I won't give you the last clips. We have an afternoon session. We'll take the Bible and we'll go strictly through it, at least to give you a, a backdrop so you can start. Amen? Amen. All right, let's have, let's have closing prayer. Father God, we thank you for your revealed will. We thank you for a clear understanding of your word. And you told us to write the vision. And though it tarries to wait for it, for it will surely come. Lord, help us not to stand idle in your vineyard. There's thousands of people out there who know thee not. Help us to be all that you want us to be, to be restored back into the image of God. Be with each person here, you know, with their burden, with their stress, what their mental condition is. According to your riches in heaven, we ask that you will come close to them and give them the answer to all the questions that they have. For indeed, you are the word and the truth. We also ask that you will bless the food that has been prepared for the nourishment of our bodies. Be with us as we go forward this afternoon also. In Jesus' name, amen.